Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. I gotta sit down and say, I really enjoyed this episode today. I did. I really enjoyed this episode today. Um, I want to start off with Terry, Chet, and Amy. Now, I've been watching the channel for a while. I think we all know how I feel about Amy. So, when I saw, you know, you, you see Chet and um, Terry, <clears throat> Terry Smith, they're talking about, you know, the new job that he's going to be getting. And you see Amy, you know, over, you know, listening in and everything like that. And my first thought was, what is this idiot doing? Okay, that was, that was my first thought. What is this idiot doing? Smith, they're listening in on their conversations like a 12-year-old schoolgirl. Now, after Chet talks about the fact that the new job is going to be in Chicago, he's going to be moving away, you can hear the sadness in his voice. Because he just started this relationship with her, and he's really happy. And now he has to pretty much kind of end it because, you know, he has his dream job. Now, Amy saw that, and even, I think, yesterday, the day before, um... When Amy was there listening to Chet talk about, you know, how he was really happy. He found somebody that's going to accept him. And, you know, he kind of got out of his depressing state that he was in. You can tell there was a part of her that felt bad about what she did. I mean, she still allowed it to happen. But she felt somewhat bad about it. Like, you can see it in her facial expression. And that's the same thing that you saw when she was listening in to... Chet kind of give Terry the bad news. Now, Amy did something today that I was like, you know what? As much as I don't like this character, she's surprising. She actually did something that was kind, and she did it because she loved her brother. And she did it despite the fact that she doesn't like Terry. And, you know, when she came in there and she told the truth about how he got the job and why she did decide to do it and, you know, her whole feelings about Terry and everything like that. Now, yeah, I felt that her feelings about Terry, and I still do feel like they're just immature. They're immature, they're childish. And for somebody of her age, it seems that it's... I wouldn't sit there and say it's beneath her, but beneath her as far as her being a grown-ass adult and handling this like a 12-year-old schoolgirl. Um, but she stepped up and she decided to sit there and come clean because she loved her brother. And, you know, she didn't want him to break out with her just because Amy felt some sort of way about him. And I was like, you know what? I'm surprised. I was like, Amy actually impressed me today. So she said it. She knew that, you know, Chuck can actually get upset with her. Um, they can have a strained, bad relationship. But she said it anyway. She made said her piece and she walked off. Now, Chet wasn't there telling her, you know, what in all good conscience, I don't know if I can sit there and take this job now. I don't know if I want to take this job. The thing is, even though that, you know, Amy had ill intentions on getting him that job, it's still a dream job that he wants to have. And Terry told him, you know what, you should take it. Because at the end of the day, Terry's not going to sit there and hold Chet back from what he wants to do just to be with her. So, you got to sit there and say I actually generally like that scene. I somewhat feel bad for Scotty. I really do. Because if you sit there and you look at this whole trial and how it's going, you know, you have Diane that's being sharp. She's on point. She is just playing offense and defense. She is all-star. Okay? And you got... Scotty 
that is just coming across as just the really slimy, um, vindictive, petty um, lawyer. You know, he, he brings up Claudius Sicard. Now, you know, we can all sit and look at that like, yo, that was self-defense. What are you talking about? You know, like, oh, you, you bashed his brain, you bashed her brains, and you could have did this, that, and the third. Is is public record that, um, you know, that he did everything, and that he confessed to it. And yeah, you know, he was supposed to serve five years. He got out of seven months. So it shows a certain level of privilege. But I mean, Nina also has money too. So let's not sit there and try to act like, you know, they're not both coming from wealthy families. So, he, he goes in with that. I'm like, all right, bro. Next one he goes in with is the fact that, you know, he took um, Avery away from Sonny. Now, that one was on him. That one was on him. But he said that he did it because he didn't like the environment that Avery was in with Sonny. And at the time, you know, Ava, you know, might have been dead. Um, and it was this whole thing with Ava trying to act like she was a twin, and I remember watching a little bit of that, and I, this is when I came back around that time, I was like, what in the hell am I actually watching? What, what, what is what is going on? What, what is this? Um, of course, that's at the time you had Silas Clay that, okay, cool, we're going to kill him off, and we're going to have Finn, and they're both doctors. But I'm not going to sit there and say too much of that, because you had Kyle and you had Troy. More like Liv, that we're both doctors and both went out with Nora Buchanan, so whatever. Um, fun times. But yeah, so he brings that up. And, you know, he defends the bus and it's just saying, hey, listen, I was doing this because I felt like it was the right thing to do. And, of course, he laid in the Nina because, you know, at this point, why not? Now, Diane comes in there and Diane kind of cleans it up and... You know, he, Scotty also brings up Nell and how, you know, oh, well, maybe, you know, Nell was a, a victim of, of you and, and you know, she hit the baby. She did this because she wanted to get away from you and your influence and family and yada, 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 blah, 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 blah. Some along those lines. Now, when Diane came in there, Diane was like, I, I'm not even going to sit there and say much. So let's take a look at Michael's arrest record and let's take a look at Nell's arrest record. And just threw him, boom, right on there. I, I, I don't think I really have to sit there and say much more to this. I think we kind of all can all guess where this is uh, where this is leading. Um, so she came in and she she played defense, and I mean, you know, Now, granted, I'm going to sit there and say, you know, this is all ugly. And, you know, Carly seems to get upset. And you can see the look on her face. And Michael's getting upset. And Nina's feeling somewhat guilty. But I'm like, listen, this day was coming. We all knew about it. We couldn't strike a compromise, which would have probably been in the best interest. And, yeah, I get it. I get it. Nina, it speaks for itself. She has made mistakes that have just been like, I don't even know if you can even call these mistakes at this point, you know? I mean, hell, even a whole confusing Wally bus and saying, well, Willow's not your real mother, I just want you to know that, you know? And then, and then I remember, I remember like it was yesterday, when she tried to clean that up, like, well, you know, the parents' books sit there and say, you know, all the books that sit there and say, and I'm like, you know? You should just sit there and say that you effed up and, and, and apologize profusely and move on because when she was sitting there saying, all oh, the books were, were sitting there saying this, that, and the third, I'm like, Nina, I don't like you on a good day. Okay? <laughs> I really don't. But that was her excuse and that was her logic. And that logic is, well, selfish because she didn't mean that. You know, she didn't mean that, and she wasn't like trying to ride for her daughter, and she felt like that was appropriate to sit there and say. We saw the look back in the air when, you know, she had paused with Willow, you know, 
being um, Wiley's mom. So this isn't a shock to anyone. Um, so this isn't just a dingbat mistake. Because I've seen dingbat mistakes, trust me. This isn't one of those. Now at the end, um, you know, the judge is like, we're going to take a 30 second break or whatever. And I want to see both of you in my office. So I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, Diane was actually the only person that was being professional throughout this whole trial compared to Scotty. I mean, come on now. I love my guy Scotty, but I mean, you weren't really a match for Diane at all. Um, you, you just really weren't. <sighs> Should have called Martin. Should have called Martin. Let me be honest. When, when, it, when it comes to his lawyers, you got Alexis, you got Diane, you got Martin. Well, to be fair, I only seen one case that Martin did, but um, he, he, he handled himself pretty well. Scotty, on the other hand, is just like, oof. Why the hell could you not sit there and take Martin? I'm going to leave it at that. Um, They take a break. You know, Nina is not there looking at Sonny. like, well, I'm sorry that this happened, and I hope you can forgive me. And, you know, Sonny can sit there and try to pass this off about the whole mental, you know, the mental illness thing or whatever. But it's just like, yeah, I'm not even going to really get into that because, you know, you can I, – I just – I mean – it's not just saying that her judgment was impaired because of her mental illness, but I'm like, at the end of the day, she still took a child that wasn't hers and drove, you know, to Canada with that said child. Now, if you want to sit there and say, well, it was a breakdown. Okay, cool. It was a breakdown. That's messed up. And I'm glad that she's doing a lot better. But that's not something you could just be like, oh, well, she had a mental breakdown. So it's, it's totally fine. I mean, it was only an innocent child, but, you know, it's whatever um i just don't feel like i could just let that go i really don't <sighs> um nicholas and ava long story short could not reach a compromise towards their feelings because you know, Nicholas is upset with Ava for giving him an allowance and moving him out when he's sitting there trying to make progress. And Ava's like, I have had it up to here with Esme and Spencer's BS. I, I really have. Um, so she's like, yo, I'm not I'm not doing this. Um, I'm just straight up not doing this anymore. They're arguing. Victor tries to make, you know, he tried to mediate. And try to sit there and, and get them to understand that they both kind of made a bit of a mistake. But Victor leaves, and at this point, Nicholas says something that I'm just like, bro. You know, even if I was even if I was attempting to try to be on your side, when you say something along the lines of, "Well, you can't," you think you you think any um you think you can do better. You think you can do better. So what? She should just sit there and settle for you. She just sit there and just put up with you. No conversation is going to ever end off good in a relationship when one person tells somebody else, you can't do better. Because at the end of the day, let's just sit there and say for the sake of argument that they couldn't. Okay, for whatever odd reason. Which I think they can, but whatever. They're never going to sit there and admit that to you. They're never going to sit there and be like, oh, you're right. I can't do better. Well, I guess I'm stuck. You know, the whole aim for the stars really resonates with a lot of people. So to sit there and tell somebody, oh, I don't think you can do any better than me. Word? Word? Because that's a lot of people's reaction. And she just walks off. Or she doesn't. I don't exactly remember what happens. Victor comes over there, and Victor's like, oh, yeah, I see, it didn't go too well. And I'm just like, Victor, what's your angle? Are you planning on planning on moving in on Nicholas's girl or something like that? Because you, uh, what, what is your game? Where's your game? Where, where, where's your end game at? 
David does have some long lines of maybe I overplay my hand or something too far or something like that. I was like, no, boy, you didn't do any of that. Nicholas told you that you couldn't do any better, and you practically was like, all right, kick rocks, let's see. But of course, when he goes in there, he's drinking like there's no tomorrow. I mean, oh man, I, I look, <laughs> the way that glass was was filled all the way, I felt like I would have been tipsy after that first damn glass, depending on what he put in that. But of course, he is right for the taking with um, what has been. Now, I don't know what Spencer's plan is as far as trying to dig up dirt because it hasn't been working and he hasn't really been sniffed there doing a good job as playing along and trying to be the perfect boyfriend or try to be even a somewhat semi-decent boyfriend because he is <laughs> he is pissed off okay after seeing Trina with um Rory and just talking to Trina about you know, the fact that Trina was like, okay, cool, so you let Ava buy you off. You left, even though you want to work out things with your father, you left because money was more important. Now, of course, Spencer's like, well, I did it because I wanted to give them a chance to work out. And I'm like, that might have been true, but I mean, come on, girl. Come on. Let's, let's, let's be very clear about that. You know, the proof is right there. You left money. Left money. You could have stayed for your dad. You left money. It, it doesn't get any more clearer than that. Um, he's pissed off. And Trina goes in and he gets upset. He takes the car and just knocks it over because, you know, that's a smart thing to do. when You're going to have to sit there and pick it up the next day, but whatever. Um, so he, he comes back and he just goes in on, on Asme. And Asme is like, yo, listen. I'm really getting sick and tired of your attitude. I'm getting sick and tired of you treating me poorly because you had another run-in with somebody who is constantly, you know, being negative towards me. And, of course, she makes her usual ultimatum. Ultimatums, no one responds well to ultimatums. So he's like, you know what, listen, I'm going to go for a ride. I'm going to talk when I get back. Because she's like, well, I'm not going to, maybe I won't be here when you get back. Sweetheart, where are you going to go? Well, I guess you could sit there and stay here, but um, he gets upset. He leaves. He slams the door when Esme's like, well, wait. Now, of course, she's smiling. She's smiling. And, of course, she's still sitting there sending letters to his Maggie. I want to sit there and see his Maggie at some point. Let's let's let's, let's try to make that happen. Um, hey, you know, on a side note, remember that whole Jennifer Smith thing and Luke Spencer's death? Are we ever going to get back to that or are we just going to act like that didn't happen to him? We're just going to sit there and just pretend that Thanos came and just snapped his fingers and we just all forgot about that like we did about that whole Nicholas and Hayden Barham shooting. We're just going to act like that didn't happen. I only mentioned this because I was like, man, now my, all these stories go on at the same time. I'm like, hmm, I'm missing something. Oh, yeah, Luke and his supposed death. Remember that? Yeah. How was that? There's so many damn stories. Now, sometimes that can work, and sometimes it can't. Because clearly, and clearly this is one of those times where it just can't work. Now, I'm just going to be completely honest. It was a fire episode today. It was a really good episode today. But, um, yeah. I'm not going to lie, I kind of feel like that's about it. I also feel like I sometimes have, I don't want to say OCD, but I always feel like I'm missing something when you put so many characters on this show. Um, oh, Willow came in there as Nina was not there leaving, and Willow grabbed Nina's arm like, you ain't going nowhere. I was like, oh, okay, cool. So we're just going to add assault to this whole thing. Because, you know, we're in a courtroom. There's cops around. And you feel it's the best time to sit there. And, um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I love her gumption. It's just, you know, not exactly very smart. But, um, yeah, this is what we're doing. Yeah, this is what we're doing. Yep, I feel like that's about it. Really do. But if I miss something, let me know in the comment section. I don't think I did. Um, yeah, with that being said, I'm going to go. 
I want to thank you for watching. Be safe. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section, and I will see you in the next video.